Hi, in this lecture we're going to be covering two very foundational important topics in linear algebra and those are the dot product and the matrix multiplication which are two multiplication related operations that we can do on matrices and vectors and matrices and matrices and vectors and vectors. So let's start off with dot products. Oh, and one more important thing, uh, this lecture goes with chapter 2.2 of the deep learning textbook that this course accompanies. So after watching this lecture, I highly recommend that you read the text in chapter 2.2. Okay, so starting off with dot products. And dot products, the first thing to think about is dot products are always between vectors and vectors. So for example, let's start with an example. So we have some 2, 3, 4, some 1, 2, 3. So let's say this is some lowercase w boldface and some lowercase v boldface. So if we want to take the dot product of these vectors, first of all, how would we show this with notation? Well, if we actually are, you know, crazy enough to write out the vectors in full form like this, which we wouldn't want to do if vectors were longer than this, so we can just put a dot in between them, because we already know these are two vectors. Um, if you're kind of lazy, what you can do is you can write v dot w, but in this case you just need to make sure that the readers know that v and w are vectors, because otherwise this just looks like any other multiplication between two scalars, because this symbol is of course used a lot for multiplication as well. Um, but the most clearest, the most recommended way to show dot products between two vectors is v transpose w or w transpose v. It doesn't really matter which order you go in. And you'll see why shortly. But why do we do that? Well, let's see. So let's just write out what this looks like. So write, let's write v transpose. So v transpose, that's going to be v flipped on its side. So one, two, three. And let's just put w right next to it, so not transposed. It's 2, 3, and 4. So in math, whenever we have two things right next to each other with no symbols between them, we kind of assume that we're doing a multiplication. For example, if we have two variables a and b, if they're scalars, we kind of just assume that's a times b, and we'd be correct there. So similarly here, we kind of want to think that this is this times this, but how do we multiply those? And that's, well, you should know the answer because this shouldn't be review. I mean, this should be review, sorry. Um, but it kind of goes against intuition, what we do. So what we do is something pretty weird. So we do this times this. So we do it element-wise. So I guess watch carefully here. So first we take this first element of this and we multiply it with the first element of this. And then we add it to this element the second element times the second element, and then we add it again to the third element of this times the third element of this. So let's just write that out. So that's going to be 1 times 2, and then we're going to add that to 2 times 3, and then we're going to add that to 3 times 4. And what we're going to get if we complete this, let's make 2 plus 6 plus 12, so that's going to be 2 plus 6 is 8, 8 plus 12 is 20, so this equals 20. So notice the first thing that's quite obvious is that this um, dot product between two vectors it results in a scalar, and it always will. So whenever you see something like v transpose w, think of that just as evaluating to a single number. All right, so that's the first thing to notice. The second thing to notice is why these vectors have to be the same length, why you need when you're taking the dot product between two vectors, why those vectors need to be the same length is because if one of these had one more elements than the other, then you would run out of components, say, um, well, quite obviously, right? <laughs> right, if we had some extra thing here, right, some five, for example, we could do this times this perfectly well, and you add that to this times this, and this times this, but then we have a five that we wouldn't be able to multiply by anything. That's why they need to be the same length. Another thing that we're going to realize is why it doesn't matter which order you're going in. Because this, of course, is V transpose and W. But what we can notice is if we do it in different order, so we do W transpose, so 2, 3, 4. So this is W transpose and V, so 1, 2, and 3. We're doing the same thing. So 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 4 times 3 is the same thing, just the multiplications are in reversed order. But that's why it doesn't matter which order you do them in. Okay. So that's a very important thing to remember, and that's going to be used all the time in um, lots of different applications, and we're going to see more and more um, uses of it and kind of more use cases for it, but that's a dot product. 
So now let's talk about matrix multiplication, which is actually quite a natural extension of this idea of dot products to matrices. So let's take two square two by two matrices. So a very easy case. Two, one, one, three, and one, two, three, one. We'll say four, just keep things interesting. Okay, so let's say this is some uppercase A, this is some uppercase B. So we wanna know what A, B is equal to. And kind of a bonus we can answer later is, is bay A equal to AB? Okay, so let's multiply these. How? <laughs> well, what we can do is something quite similar to dot products. So, let's see. So our answer is gonna be matrix. That's the spoiler I'm gonna give you. But other than that, let's just see what we're gonna do. So remember in dot products how we took, um, you know, we took some <laughs> vector here and we multiplied it by a column vector like that, and we kind of did this thing where we did this times this, 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 this. You just did that, you should remember that. Um, now we just do the same thing. So we take this row here, and we treat this as a vector here, this row, and we treat this column as another vector, and we just take the dot product between this row and this column. So what we're gonna end up doing is two times one plus one times three. So that's gonna be two and three, so that's gonna be two plus three is five. So that five resulted in the dot product between this and this. Predictably now, to find out this element here, what we're gonna do is a dot product between here and here. So this first row again, but now with the second column. So now we're gonna do two times two, which is four, one times four, which is four, so four plus four equals eight. Now to find this one, now we go to the next row and we take a dot product between this row here and the first column again. So we're gonna do one and three with one and three, so that's gonna be one times one is one, three times three is nine, so one plus nine is 10. Lastly, we do the last row here with the last column, so it's gonna be one times two is two, three times four is 12, so we're gonna get 14. So that is AB right there. So basically what we did is for each element here, we took the row and the column that makes it into that. So for the, um, I'm trying to think of a good general way to say this. For the ith and jth element here, basically so the ith um, row, so in this case would be one, one, the ith row and the jth column, basically what we do is we take the dot product between the ith row here and the jth column here. So the ith row here, the jth column here equals the ith jth element in the resulting matrix. But you don't really need to worry about that too much as long as you know that we're doing kind of row by column and you can do it pretty naturally. That's really all you need to know. So one more thing, uh, one kind of big thing, is that we just dealt with square matrices, ma square matrices right here. Um, and also, you know, let's just answer our bonus question first before we go on, go on to the next thing. So let's just do by experiment. So now we know that AB is equal to this. So is BA equal to the same thing? So let's just write it out for good measure. I'll do this quickly, don't worry. One, two, three, four. And then we have another two, one, one, three. Two, one, one, three. So this is BA. So let's see what this equals. This is equal to the same thing. Let's find out. So one and two, two and one, so that's me one, so two, so that's me equal to four. I'm doing this quickly, um, but you can slow it down if you want to or do it yourself and pause the video. So one and two, one, so that's me one times one is one, two times three is six, so that's me seven. And you know, I'm not gonna even finish it, <laughs> but we can already see that these are different. Um, so answering a question, BA does not equal AB, which is different when you're dealing with scalars, because with scalars, that is true. Um, but with, uh, with uh, matrices, it's not. But rules that are true, multiplication rules that are true, and very important to remember with matrices, things that you can do is the distribu distributive law. So if A, B, and C are all vectors, so A, B, sorry, if A, B, and C are all matrices, things that we can do, uh, or our can equivalent is A, B plus C is equal to A, B, plus AC, so that's a distributive properly. Additionally, if A, B, and C are matrices again, uh, we can also say that A, B, and C, so this is equal to, um, sorry, <laughs> is equal to A, B, C. So it doesn't, order, it doesn't matter which order we multiply them in, and that's called the associative property. So matrices are both distributive and associative, but they are not commutative. 
which means that you can't, as we mentioned earlier, AB is usually not equal to BA. Okay, so those are the three properties. So they're distributive, um, associative, but not commutative. Okay, so we got that. Um, so now the last thing we need to cover in this lecture, and I hope this isn't going too long, is to cover uh, matrix multiplication of rectangular matrices. So let's just do that real quick. So rectangular matrices. So we have some matrix here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is going to be kind of big. Let's make this one small. 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1. Okay, so let's say this is A and this is B. So can we do A, B? Well, let's look at our old kind of thing we used to do. So what we used to do is we take the dot product of the row with the column. So let's say the dot product of this with this, and uh-oh, we already face a problem. This is a different length of this, so we can't take the dot product. So if these are the same thing, so this is a 3 by 2, and this is also a 3 by 2, we cannot actually find the matrix multiple A, B, because there's no way we can multiply these. But let's say instead that we transpose this. So let's see if I remember this is 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. So the transpose, so 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. So let's transpose that. 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. Uh, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. So that's a transpose there. Now let's see if we can find A, B. So let's take this and multiply it by this. Oh, we can do that, so that's nice. Right, so now we can take the dot product of this and this, so don't worry, I'll go as fast as I can. So 3, uh, that's going to be 6. And 4. And I just have 4 this part. Uh, 6 and 4, so we're going to do 6 and 4. And then we're going to do this part of this. That's going to be 3 and 3. That's going to be 3 plus 8. That's going to be uh, 11. And 3 and 8. That's going to be 7. And we're going to do 5 and 6. 2 and 1. That's going to be 10. And 6. That's going to be 16. And we're going to do 5 and 6 in this part here. So 5 and 12. That's going to be 17. And we're going to do 5 and 6 in here. So 5 plus 6 is going to be 11. And we're going to do 7 and 8 with 2 and 1. So 7 plus 2 is 14. 8. That's going to be 22. And 7 and 8 plus 6 is going to be 7 plus 16. That's going to be 23. So that's going to be the resulting matrix. So when you have a 3 by 2 and now a 2 by 3, our resulting is a 3 by 3. And the general rule, if we want to know if we can multiply any two matrices together, and a very quick way to know if we can do this without kind of checking the rows and the columns, is just write A, B, and then write the dimensions of them right below. So let's say this is M, N, Q, P, right? So those are the dimensions. We know we can multiply these if the middle ones are the same. So if n equals q. And m does not necessarily have to equal p, and we'll face one thing as the final kind of example here, is it where m and p are, um, where m and p are different, but here they are the same. Here they're both 3. But notice here the insides critically are the same, 2 and 2. So n has to equal q, and kind of a bonus thing about this is that we can easily know the resulting matrices size, which is going to be m times p, so resulting in m times p. So the insides have to be the same, and the resulting matrix is the outside. So in words, that means the columns of the first matrix has to equal the rows of the second matrix, and then um, the resulting matrix is going to have the amount of columns, amount of rows from the first matrix, and the amount of columns from the second matrix. Okay. Now, the last case of this, and it's going to be something that shows up a lot, is when you multiply a matrix by a vector. And we'll see why it's allowed from this rule. So, let's say A is some square matrix, again, 2, 1, 1, 3. And let's say X is a vector, 1, 2. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually do A, X. And you can see how the dimensions work out. This A is 2 by 2 and x is 2 by 1. So the middle ones are the same, so we can expect to have, and let's see if this is right, something that's 2 by 1. So let's see if we can do the same thing. So what we do is we do the same thing. We do this row times this. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus two, 1 times 2 is, so this is going to be equal to 4. And then since we have no other columns to go to, we just go to the next row. So it's going to be 1, 3. So 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 2 is 6, so this is going to be 7. So a matrix times a vector is a vector again. And notice that we can't put this vector in front of it, so we can't do xA, because instead then we're going to get this. 
and now no longer the inside ones match. So we always have to have the vector after it when we're doing a matrix vector product. But matrix vector products are very, very critical and will show up basically everywhere in this entire course. So watch out for these. And of course, um, the length of this vector here has to be the same as the amount of uh, columns in this. Um, the, amount, the amount of rows of this vector has to be the amount of the columns in this one. So this doesn't necessarily have to be square. So say, uh, if this is two again, we can actually do that if we have one, three, four. Um, sorry. <laughs> if we have one, three, four, five, six, seven. Because now we just do this row with this row, and this row with this row, and this row with this row, and then we get something that's um, three long. So it, it doesn't have to be square, our matrix for multiplying it, it just has to obey, obey these same rules. So now, just for the final thing, this final matrix, so basically it's gonna be, just see if it kind of follows our rules that we've been establishing. This first one's three by two, and this is two by one. Yes, so the middle is two, and the outside is gonna be three by one, so it's gonna be a three long vector. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. It was a bit rushed, but I don't wanna make this too long. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lecture. See you there. Bye.